right. Welcome to the Brookfield Selectman's meeting of Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. Would you please uh, join me in saluting the flag? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to entertain a motion to approve an expense warrant for 11519 for $594,000 and I mean $594,411.54. Do you want to do the second one as well? And we'll do the second one. It's a payroll warrant for 11519 for $168,000. Five hundred and forty-nine dollars and seventy-five cents. Motion to approve the warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now our next on the agenda is to approve um, selectmen's minutes. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Announcements. The town hall improvement committee invites residents to a town hall open house from four. PM to 7 PM Thursday, November 7th. Come and see the recent updates, improvements, and renovations taking place at the town hall. Snacks, pizza, and drinks will be available. Please be advised that a winter parking ban will be in effect in town from November 15th through April 1st from the hours of 11 PM to 6 AM. There shall be no parking on the streets. Also, snow and ice removed from driveways, sidewalks, or private properties shall not be plowed, shoveled, or blown across any public way, street, or roadway. And Senator Goldby's aide will hold office hours in the Brookfield Town Hall from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow, Wednesday, November 6th. Does anyone else have anything to say? And I would like, I, uh, I was, the other night, I think it was last Sunday, Wednesday or Thursday night, the power had gone out, and um, I someone called me and gave a compliment to Ryan Pomprion, our new um, highway supervisor. He said at 3 o'clock in the morning that uh, Ryan was out in front of his house cutting a tree. And he said, you know, he'd never seen that before, and so he says we have a good choice that we made for a highway superintendent. Anybody else have anything? I just did a job. Yeah? Any, anything you'd like to say, announcement or anything? No. Nope. Okay. All right, we'll go on to uh, our tax classification hearing. Now, um, I should sign in. Right? Yeah, sign in. <laughs> tax classification hearing, Town of Brookfield. In accordance with Chapter 369 of the Acts of 1982, the Brookfield Board of Selectmen will hold a classification hearing on Tuesday, November 5th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. at the Town Hall, 6 Central Street, Brookfield, Mass., in the first floor banquet hall to determine the residential factor for the Town of Brookfield to be used in setting the tax rate of fiscal 2020. Linda M. Lincoln, Chair, Clarence R. Snyder III, Vice Chair, Beth L. Coughlin, Clerk, Board of Selectmen. Well, Mr. Jones, would you like to take over? Uh, yep. As of uh, so, every year, uh, for those who don't know, that we have to have a tax classification hearing to determine if we're going to have a single tax rate across all of our uh, the, the various uh, areas, or if we're going to try to split and put some of the tax burden on either the commercial, industrial. Uh, in the past, this town has never voted that. Uh, it's the uh, there is not enough uh, currently 92 point I'm going to round off 92.5 percent of this town is residential value wise mm -hmm. 3.6 commercial 1 percent industrial and 2.9 percent personal property so any shift would have a neg negligible effect on the, what the taxes are yeah. on the residential side however it would serve to uh, alienate any businesses yeah. and give us a bad so mm -hmm. that's the way we have voted in the past um, so before you, you do that, I just wanted to let you know that I came with a little more info this year the average value the median value of a single-family home in Brookfield in 2020 is two hundred and thirty seven thousand three hundred and twenty six dollars 
That's up 6.68% from an average of 222,459 last year. So based on that, we could, uh, when we get a tax rate set, we could give a, uh, an average tax, um, household uh, residential tax um, for the year. So are there any questions? I mean, there's really not a lot of discussion, yeah. but. So you need a motion to hold a single tax rate. So yes. I, I provide that motion. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, to our friends that are here from advisory, it's always good to see you. <laughs> the number you folks want is the new year, the new growth number. And um, I, we set it this afternoon at about 4.30, finally back and forth with DOR. Uh, for 2020, the new growth is $4,368,531. Um, the current three-year new growth average is $5.561 million. That's 2018 through 2020, which is 100% above the previous three-year, which was 2.787 mil, and the previous three before that was 2.243. So we've had more new growth in the past three years than we did in the previous six plus years. Well, that's also that's because common. you're um, reappraising a lot of the properties also. Right, we did a, um, we've just completed a, every nine years we're required to visit every parcel in town. Um, it hadn't been done well prior to my arriving, so we just completed it in about three years. And you can see from the, uh, the new growth for the past three years, it's very obvious that it, you know, there were a lot of things out there that had not been picked up in the past. Okay, so but in, in terms of the new growth value that advisory needs, it would be that times our mill rate, correct, for the dollar value of new growth? I believe. Would, I usually yeah. don't get in on that That's, end of it. Yeah, yeah. So, so you just, with those values, you have to calculate what's, what's the resultant change in income against that that over total that change in, in valuation and that's just the new growth piece Correct. Absolutely. there is more growth than that right. because that's where i always fight with uh with the department of revenue okay so it's organic growth versus new growth correct so okay. there's something you know that like change if, in enhancements in property versus yes yeah, yeah or change yeah. in market value of a same property change of condition doesn't count a grade change where somebody you know, redoes the outside of the house, redoes the, they have fancy everything. Yeah. That does not count that's towards new, new growth. growth. Mm -hmm. So that's what we just spent the last 48 hours hashing out. Um, okay. And uh, I stood by my numbers and had to do a little explaining. Um, yeah. can, but Can you give those figures again for the last couple of years of new growth? Or do you have a you want the current year it? and then the yeah. last three years? Yeah. So the current year is, uh, for, for 2020, is 4 million. Three hundred sixty-eight thousand five hundred and thirty-one dollars. Okay. And the, the three-year average, including twenty twenty, is five million five hundred sixty-one thousand one hundred dollars. Okay. Great. Thank you. So now, um, at some point, there's an LA five that will need to be um, signed. Mm -hmm. um, I still there's still some numbers that need to be added in that will affect that. So you don't want to sign that yet. We'll okay. let you know, you, the town clerk will, will sign it, board of assessors mm -hmm. will sign it, and, or a majority of the board of assessors and a majority of the yeah. select board, and we'll advise when that's ready. Okay, what are the pieces still required in order to complete that? Do you know? Honestly, I don't know where they come from. There's so many different sheets that pile into it. Okay. I don't know, I just know that um, it, it's not there right now. Laurie can help. Okay. It's a culmination of everything put on the tax rate recap sheets. And okay. So, all of the so we need all the revenues and like yes. the, the, the local receipts yeah. and all of that. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. it. Okay. Overlay, free cash, all those sheets have to be filled in and then clump everything together. Got it. Fine. We're good? That's good. Yeah. That's so, sure. so, I mean, as far as with your software situation, you have enough now to, to move ahead? Or you yeah, the, um, our data was uh, last Thursday. They took our data last Thursday. Uh, we've been, our values had been certified on Wednesday. They took the data on Thursday. Um, so we, they, it's in the process right now of uh, transferring over to the new system. 
I don't have a time frame. They have not given us that when it'll happen. Uh, going into a recertification year, uh, which may complicate things a little bit from the Department of Revenue side. So it just means we need to document things a lot more on our side. Um, and I always have more paperwork than I need anyway, so I'm not worried about doing that. Um, so yeah, but thank you for asking. That's hopefully going right along the way it should. Now when Mr. Gillis arrives, you can give him that good Steve, number. He's gonna I make mean, a smile. Uh, uh, Al, one quick question. Sure. Al, before you, I had a question too. Before oh sure, I'm sorry. So, so you'll still, with this new changeover, you're gonna have to keep both of the systems up and running. Correct. Yes. Um, in order to, what they'll do is they're taking all the data from the old system and they call they port it over. Yeah. And then um, we attend training week after next. And then when that, when we come back, the plan is that they'll have this, the whole new system there. We'll run a series of reports looking for any kind of yeah. discrepancies because when you bring mm -hmm. 1,600 parcels over, there's going to be discrepancies. Yeah. Of course. And we'll have, I'm, I'm shooting for a 1% discrepancy rate. Whether or not we can do that, I don't know, but that's our target. Um, so we will start working on that. In the meantime, any changes that do need to be made, rather than just make them in the new system, I want to make them in the new and the old and compare value changes as well, just to make sure that everything behind the scenes is lined up correctly. All right. And Beth, you wanted to know? A quick question was, what was our, our, our tax rate this year was eighteen dollars and ninety five cents, down from nineteen fourteen and down from nineteen sixty two the year before that. Okay. And I have no idea where it's going. No, this year. I, I understand that. I understand that. I, I hope I know, but I don't uh, want to <laughs> go on the record no at this point. Right. And then, um, so it, in preparation for the system changeover, what have you all been doing, like? purging records or reconciling records? The uh, Department of Revenue came in and they ran a series of reports to show us anywhere we had um, questionable data. any kind of questionable data. So I have a stack about like this that we went through. Um, Patty was huge. This would not have happened without Patty King. Um, and we went through and when the guy came to take the data, he said, you guys have made a lot of changes here. Yeah. I said, well, it was good. We picked up value in some places, and other places we found things that weren't uh, assessed you know, the same, where apples and apples, or apples and oranges. Um, so um, the um, the amount of time and effort that's been put into it to make sure, because I figure the more time and effort we put in before the cutover, yeah, you don't the want better our data is going to be on the other. You've been through it. You know, you, you want to have as, as solid a database as you can going into this. So coming out the other side. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you don't have to question what was in there the in, the in the first place. place. There are some um, areas that were just too vast to get into, okay. and they're the smaller sheds and things like that. Yeah. That it, uh, this $100 discrepancy in the value of a shed is not going to make or break, mm -hmm. you know, anything Town major. Overall. But we will still look at every anything that comes in. You know, if something comes in, it was $100, and now it's 500. That's huge discrepancy, and we're going to figure out why, and that might lead us to something else. Great. And we also have uh, Roy Bishop, who's always our consultant, mm -hmm. um, and available. he's available. Uh, he was in last week, and his coming. He's coming into his quieter time now, so it works good. So if we need him, he's more available than he would have been going around doing what he does to help everybody leading into that this whole um, setting of the tax rate. So awesome. Thank you. Okay. So. Just the, the question of, of it, time and availability, you feel comfortable that you have the resources to support what, are, what we're doing? I'm hopeful. I don't know the time frame. That's the, okay. um, they could say we're turning you folks on December 1st, December 31st. And, you know, then, you know, if I reach out to Roy and he decides he's taking two weeks in January <laughs> on vacation. <laughs> Oops. And we'll, we'll, but we have plenty of time at this point. I'll run dual systems as long as it, as long as I feel comfortable. Until I feel comfortable with the new system, we will take the time and put that data in both systems to make sure that they're in lockstep. If something were to happen and this new system blows up, whatever, we have the old one to fall back on, and that's my goal. Getting through, you know, and if it takes an extra month over the winter, then we'll then so be it, and we'll just it shouldn't, but if it does, it does. So. Okay. 
No, you, you go. So this is wonderful you're asking all these questions. <laughs> Try. So the four million was a six point something percent increase over? Um, year over year, I didn't do that. It was, it went from, actually last year it was 6.6 .6 million in new growth, and this year is 4.3, 4.4. So it's down. Uh, there were more changes this year, but they were smaller changes overall. Okay. Um, and we had a couple less housing starts, and that's a, a big uh, impact right there. Okay. And and the, what's the base number? The new growth is for this year. Yeah. Uh, do, you ha do you happen to have it? When you say the base number, the actual new growth number? No. So you get new growth, which comes on top of whatever our base was. The 11, I don't. The I didn't. I didn't do okay. that. All right. No. It's it's up well above that number. Okay. But I don't know it off the top of my head. Not a room. Thank you. Okay. Okay. My question. Oh one sure. More, sorry. One more question. Now, when it when the time comes when you um, give the tr uh, tax collector all of the data that she needs and the conversion, will that be coming from the old system or the new one? As far as tax bills, for yes, the actual for the tax, tax bills. bills that go out, they will come from the old system. From the old system. Hopefully, yeah. this will be the last time they come. I, I take that data that I have, uh, put it into a uh, text uh, file, which text delineated mm -hmm. file, which goes to VADAR. It doesn't go through the tax collector. VADAR does their magic, and then it comes back oh, to the okay. tax collector, and she prints the actual bills. Oh, I, I know that, but I didn't know if you were going to be doing which, you know. No, it'll be it, from the from old the system. Old okay. Absolutely. I, okay. There's no way that between now and you know, early December yeah. when we print the bills that okay, we'll be yeah, ready to, validated. I'm not going to no. trust that, so not with okay. not with the amount of, uh, um, I mean, it's the whole town's financials that's based on this. I'm going to make sure it's rock solid um, before we get to this checking. next. Yep, okay. great yeah. question. Yeah, that and Vader's process might have to change because the file format might be different coming out of the new system. I guarantee you it will, or yeah. the order or something. Yeah. And uh, mm. I'm, I'm anticipating mm. that. And there's probably going to be some kind of a charge there as well, which hopefully is part of the, the uh, money that was appropriated two years ago at town meeting. That's good. Thank you, Al, for all your support. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Do you have them? Both systems going to be backed up. Uh, yeah, well, the, the new system is cloud-based, so it's automatically backed up. Mm -hmm. And the old system is backed up. And you know, I, it, the DOR has the current backup as well in case something were to happen. And right now we're frozen from making changes, so I could call that Todd Jackson. But a great question. But yeah, they're both uh, the the new one where it's cloud based. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Before we were actually backing up a server in the basement, which is really not the best way to do things. But the old state camera system, that's that's what you did. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Al, for all the info. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, next on our agenda is a financial update with our town account. Lori. Okay, so I'm back with my financial update. Oh. I wish I had better news, but fiscal year 18 Schedule A has still not been submitted. We are very close now to submitting, for anyone who doesn't know what a Schedule A is or what it entails, it is a 12-part, absolutely miserable form that DOR makes you fill out that basically takes every bit of money you collected and expended throughout the fiscal year and you break it up by the insides of your account number that everybody uses, the 5100s, the 5700s, the 4800s, and that tells the Department of Revenue what you took the money in for, what purpose, what you spent the money for, what purpose. Um, the Schedule A, like I said, is 12 parts. We have parts one through seven fully completed, we, which is the general fund revenues and expenditures. We are working on part eight now. We just received information that we needed from the treasurer, which is accounting for all employee wages um, and accounting for who is full-time and part-time employees. We are still working on part nine, which is cash, which is where we are still held up. 
Um, part 10 is debt, which we are finishing up hopefully tomorrow. And parts 11 through 12 are like an end of year analysis. It's a KAR form, um, which just kind of ties everything that you've done throughout the year together. Um, with the issues we've had um, in being able to reconcile fiscal year 18 cash, my boss, um, Eric Kinsherp, has made the decision that we will be using most likely the 18 cash that is in VAR. We've made huge changes in the amount that you have. Um, we've made corrections. We have found notable discrepancies. We are going to compare it to what the treasurer has, mm -hmm. but most likely when we report cash on part nine, we're going to use what's in VADAR. Um, and we will do that with a comment. There is a comment section when you submit the schedule. There's a comment section when you submit anything to DOR and let them know that we are using the VADAR reported cash from the general ledger only, and that is unreconciled. Our goal that we gave to Pioneer Valley, who is your direct consult, is that we would be fully completed by November 22nd. Our goal is to be fully done by Friday. Um, we think that's fully attainable. We have three small parts left to finish. Um, that we're hoping to actually finish tomorrow, tie up everything else in parts 11 through 12, and be done on Friday and submit. So you, are you going to be receiving something? Is something promised to you between now and Friday, or do you have what you need to do for Friday? So we received the wage information that we needed. Um, I went over cash with the treasurer's office today to go over a few items that were outstanding. We are going to look at their overall number that they come up with for the end of June 2018, but most likely we are going to use the unreconciled general ledger number now that we have reconciled it back to the ledger ourselves. Um, we just need to go through the debt, um, which we have files on, and I will probably have a few more questions for the treasurer's office, but other than that, um, we should be finishing it on our own. Okay, so, so the process that you're using, I know, has been used historically by this town in the past mm -hmm. because we haven't necessarily had robust processes in place to do the cash reconciliation right. across the two most critical departments, the treasurer and the accountant's Correct. office. Correct. What's our next step to not wind up here again? So for fiscal year 19, this will not happen. So for fiscal year 19, which we just ended, um, our goal is we'd still like to try to commit to getting everything submitted, which would be your balance sheet and your Schedule A by the end of this year. As of right now, it's not looking promising. However, to submit the 19 balance sheet and Schedule A, we will balance monthly cash with the treasurer and the collector, or we will not submit it because we need to have a good cash number. Um, we're taking the 18 cash back to the general ledger because we thoroughly went through it. Um, we have your George Hunt analysis, which gave an overall cash number mm -hmm. back to your bank statements. We have the reconciliations that the treasurer did, um, which was just going through receipts and warrants and making sure that we all tied out. Um, so we did that for fiscal year 18. However, for fiscal year 19, the treasurer is going to need to do an actual cash book, which reconciles her receipts and her warrants back to her bank statements to make sure that there are no errors and then taking that cash book and balancing with our office for every month of fiscal year 19. Um, we're confident in the receivable amount that we're putting on for the Schedule A. We've gone through all that. We made a lot of corrections, which are the accountant to the collector. Um, so those amounts we think are correct. Um, we do have and, a lot and of what adjustments. Does that, what does that primarily feed into in terms of the different parts of the submission with Richard? Revenues. Okay, so revenues, and that's part of the 11 and 12 analysis? Or? It, it goes into parts 1 through 7, which is part of your general fund revenue. Okay. Um, and then it ends up in parts of 11 through 12. Everything ends up in parts 11 through 12. So what are the roadblocks between now and 1231 19? 
we need to balance monthly cash with the treasurer's office, which we have not started to do. Okay, and what resources do you need to do that? I don't need any. Then I turn to the treasurer's office and ask what resources do we need to be able to complete by 1231? We are working on it, too. Understood. So with that, working each month, we'll be able to do do we have do we have sufficient resources, or do we need additional resources to support the 1231 date? I don't think that we need additional resources. Okay, is there a milestone or a target point between now and 1231 that we can check in with to see how we're doing for progress? Honestly, if we don't get at least six months done in the next, I would say 30 days, we're not we will not make a 1231 deadline. Okay, so because in the accounts office on a weekly basis, we need to do a month, basically, mm -hmm. is what it right. comes down to. So for my office alone, I need at least a month to do the balance sheet and the schedule yeah. I. Do we need additional resources or support? I don't believe so. No. So, so is it, would it be possible on a weekly basis to receive a quick note from both offices regarding where we are on the like what month we're up to in yes, terms of the cash reconciliation. Cash yeah, that would so be great. Yeah, because yeah. Cause I'd be interested in that, just if that way we know right away if we fall behind on this schedule that we've got set for, for trying to make that end of the year. Absolutely. Yeah. Peter? When you do the uh, completed schedule A, for fiscal year 18, mm -hmm. will you have a figure of free cash that you uh, are looking to be certified? No. So the Schedule A does not um, generate a free cash number. The balance sheet is the submission that generates a free cash number um, because we are not going to submit a balance sheet for fiscal year 18. Um, we're solely not submitting it because the time limit for using that year's free cash has already passed and expired. Um, we are not submitting it and, and that is per the DOR's request. They don't want to see it at this point. I will be completing a quick uh, balance sheet myself, which wouldn't, we can't even see what the free cash number would have been. Um, DOR basically takes our numbers, they put them in a free cash calculation worksheet um, that gives them four different percentages, they make sure that you fall within a certain percentage range, and then they tell you what your free cash number would be. The Schedule A solely tells the Department of Revenue how much money and that you take in and that you spend on which different areas of state government, and that's how they determine what local aid that you should receive. So school choice, um, state aid, land of low value, um, charter school, because you guys receive charter school here now, um, and those types of things. So that gives you your monthly state aid dollar amount. So when they figure out the cherry sheet um, amounts, that's what they use the Schedule A for. But when I do the fiscal year 19 um, balance sheet, that would generate a free cash amount. Yeah. Just, just a question. I'm still a little bit confused on 18 because we're not, I mean, because we're so far past, we're not submitting what the state has required. So how are they going to, they've accepted that, I guess, because you've been in constant contact with them and whatever we've given them, they'll just do the best they can with it? No, so the balance sheet, after a certain date, they just, they don't even want to see your balance sheet. So the balance sheet that you submit, so fiscal year 19 balance sheet, um, it technically doesn't have a due date. However, it is, in their mind, it is due before you set your tax rate. Before you submit a recap, you should have your balance sheet in. That is the way it goes. You submit a balance sheet, you do the tax rate recap, and then you submit a Schedule A. Your prior fiscal year, so which we are in, so fiscal year 19, the free cash generated from that balance sheet would expire on June 30th, 2020 to be used. After that date, you cannot expend any of that free cash. So because the fiscal year 18 balance sheet, the date to use that money would have been June 30th, 2019, because that date has expired, they don't even want to see the balance sheet. 
Okay, but whatever the cherry sheet that was being set before, is there a possibility that because now things are being recalculated that, that Oh, for the schedule, I, it, the cherry sheet shouldn't change. Yeah, um, yeah that's all driven by yeah. state budget and the formulas yeah. for peeling it out. It, it wouldn't have any indication. The primary place where this is going to drive a difference for us, and I'm not, and I always get, I, I have to be frank, I get, I, I get the different forms and, and what we get off of them. Yep. You know, I know the titles, not the numbers is the the keys out of this that that will probably affect the numbers that y'all use for for calculating what we have available in terms of budget would be um, whatever trend we have going with local receipts that is is part of the inputs to this uh, in terms of receivables a little bit and, yes. and the tax recapitulation form that's where that's that's kind of critical so that goes actually that's part of the recap yeah right, right, just the exactly recap. that's yep. just part of the recap mm -hmm. Um, but in terms of the, the like the fund balances and, and such, balance sheet. yeah, that's, yep. that's the one you're not doing is the balance exactly. sheet. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So. Yep. So the only one we are skipping over is the fiscal year 18 balance sheet. Um, I mean, I will point out in doing my research, you did skip the fiscal year 16 balance sheet as well. Um, so this has been done before. Mm -hmm. It didn't affect you. Um, right, that was when we did the 16-17 combined submission. Exactly. Yep. So like I said, I am going to take a quick balance sheet that will never be submitted. I will take the 10 or so numbers I need off of it, move them into 19, and then it will basically be, a, the 19 will be a culmination of what you would have gotten in 18 with no spending plus 19. So you should have, one would assume, somewhere similar to what you received in 17, which was kind of a double amount. Okay, so, so as far as you're concerned, I guess Clarence's question is we've got to hit this 12, 31, 31, yeah. or we turn into pumpkins or whatever, and that's right. really where we have to get to. Yes. Right. You get Steve. Pam? Steve. Oh, Steve Steve's first. Steve would be first. Um, I, I was just wondering, um, we, we have weekly milestones to finish, you know, monthly reconciliations here. Um, has, Linda, you best to answer this, uh, Accountant, um, have we displayed uh, the ability to do one week per, one month per week up to this point? I mean, is this a realistic expectation? I mean, on, on, on October 1st, we asked, the Treasury Department, if they needed extra assistance, the answer was no. We missed a number of deadlines. So uh, we have Christmas, we have Thanksgiving, we have a four-day work week. Um, uh, we've seen no display of this yet, or, or do, do, do you have faith in that? I have, I have some I have faith that we will will have it done or if it's not done by the 31st then it might go over a little bit into January Laurie do you feel how about your feelings on that I personally do not think it will happen you don't think it will no happen? I don't you don't think these weekly deadlines can be done? no I don't if I may observe not counting this week there are five full weeks between now and the end of the month plus Thanksgiving week plus Christmas week, mm -hmm. plus New Year's. So given the holiday schedule, we're looking at, a, to make the end of the month milestone, we are looking at two months being reconciled by the accountant's office and the treasurer's office every full, every week. That, to make our goal, that is the progress we need to make. And I will observe that, and I will ask the selectman to keep that in mind when evaluating the progress of the financial team. So, uh, Steve, Steve. Peter? <laughs> I, I, would just, I would just like to, you know, um, while we're talking about this weekly deadlines, what, what are the, should we not be ready to um, uh, correct, uh, if, if we're falling behind, what is the plan to correct that and should we not, have a plan in mind or a plan prepared 
um, should we, on week one, fall behind? May I, Madam Chair? Sure. So, again, 1231 is a hard date, and you don't feel comfortable with 1231. So given that you don't have confidence in 1231, what is a time post-1231 that we need to be doing something? Do we need to do something between now and 1231 that would be in, in trouble? It will all depend on how quickly the treasurer's office can get caught up on cash. Okay. Um, Honestly, I'm not quite sure what else to do. Okay, so then I guess we I have provided all the resources I can. Okay, all right. So then from the treasurer's office, you're hearing uh, some concern as to meeting the date. Are there things that we need to be doing between now and 1231 to stay on track? Um, additional resources, whatever. Or what do we do? Or, or if we slip 1231, what do we slip to? And if we slip to that, that, that to me says that the audit that we wanted to pick up the no, phone no, on, right. on January 1st, that, that telephone call is going to get delayed. Right. G given, given that that call is going to get delayed, how delayed is it? Because I, what I see is a, a, a tremendous need is an audit to be completed in sufficient time to go to town meeting, in the annual town meeting, understanding our all of our books that they are at pristine correct and so an audit will take a month i i would based on another town in the same situation that we just did it took the audit took a month to do uh, we did a quick five-year analysis of an audit but we concentrated on the two years that we were involved in so it took about a month all right. Given the okay. situation yes. that you see, mm -hmm. it's about a month. Yes. So if we didn't start on January 1, we start on February 1, it's March 1, that we'd have the uh, audit result. So okay. that March 1, that would give us two months mm -hmm. to prepare for town meeting okay. to say what resources we need to move into fiscal 21. Right. And just to keep in mind, the longer that we delay starting the audit becomes audit season mm -hmm. right. for other yeah. towns. Right. And, and if, we, if our goal yeah. is to use the same auditing company that you used that one last time, they are the preferred auditor of yes. this area, so they do get very busy starting in March. So what, 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 how far away are we from being in a position where we can get that two months a week reconciled do we have all the tools and the information in place and we just need to sit down and do it i mean where are we at in preparation for kind of this speed dating version of cash reconciliation sorry <laughs> i'm not trying to be funny but but it's kind of what it is right and, and because really in a in a in a healthy organization because first of all we've got this to do we've got all of last year to do right right and then we also have to understand like once we're done with 19 we have to get 2020 caught, caught up mm -hmm. right right so you know how we're <coughs> positioned from from your perspective in the treasurer's office are we in terms of being able to lay out do we do we understand what the process looks like do we have all of the data in place or are we still going to be like pulling boxes off the shelf in order to do any part of this reconciliation <laughs> Well, presently speaking, all of our receipts are approved for FY19. Okay. Uh, warrants are approved. We're working with the cash. And as we're working on FY19 daily, we're also working on FY20 to make sure it does not go behind. Okay. So, does that mean does that mean that we're actually doing some of the reconciliation between accountant and treasurer for this year we now? We haven't sat with the accountant yet for mm -hmm. FY19. Okay. But on our end, we are ready to sit, which we can start sitting. This week or next week, whenever she would like, we will have stuff ready for her. Okay. So for fiscal year 19, I did an analysis of the receipts because I have to enter them into the tax rate recap. There are still receipts that need to be entered. Um, so we'll have to go over those uh, because I need revenues to be exact. Um, I'm showing that revenues are still unposted. So I have to go over that and I realized that tonight um, after getting the remaining revenues. 
um, from the treasurer's office, there are still missing revenues that need to be posted. So in order to sit and do a month and balance with the treasurer, they need to have done um, their cash book, which is like a cover sheet for each bank, but they also need to do the second page, which is a re reconciliation, and tie back every outstanding dollar amount, which we didn't have to do for fiscal year 18. Um, so you can't just put on you know, an unknown dollar amount. You have to break down every single to the penny and balance out to zero, which that's why I do not think that we will be doing a month anytime soon because that's not how they did fiscal year 18 because we did it quickly. They were not asked to do a cash book. Okay, do you feel that you have an adequate cash book in place right now in order to Where do it? Where is in the cash book that uh, Eric Kinscher sent to hold? Our company provided okay. them with a cash book to use. Okay. So, okay, so when do you think we can? <coughs> That's, no, no, go ahead. When do you think we'd be able to start? When? What do you think is the first date that we would be able to have you all sit down to, to do that? It sounds like. Next Tuesday. Okay. Next Tuesday. You're not here. Right. Between now and next no. Okay. So then next Tuesday you'll sit down and you'll start reconciling together. So I'm not going to reconcile their bank statements with them, just okay. to be clear. Yeah, I'm going to sit down and own. see a, full, that. a fully done mm -hmm. month. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then it would be at the next selectmen's mm -hmm. meeting that we get a report on that progress. And that's just the 19th, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Madam Chair, it's yes. um, mentioned mm -hmm. like a weekly update. Do you want that via email or do you need me to call you? Because I do know that you're in. Um, the building well probably I would yeah. I would like an email and probably both of the other selectmen would also yeah. hmm. mr. Gillis yes um, with all due respect everyone's talking about December 31st the schedule 19 due date um, um, And talking about extending that and various other things. I think if we get to that point, we are, you know, our pants are really on fire, okay? If we have weekly goals that you just agreed to monitor on a weekly basis, are we not, should we not be prepared? And what we would advise you, what, what, you know, what, what, what the advisor would be advising you is, should we not have a plan ready with additional treasury consultant service. Uh, we can ask Pioneer Valley for such a thing um, to come in. Sure. And, uh, you know, sort of on a moment's notice, on a dime, and uh, step in and get this thing going and hitting these weekly goals. This is serious business, and, um, um, and, and, and that's what we, we are advising. Uh, and should we not have that ready? I don't want to be here on uh, December 10th or whatever the date would be and hear that we've missed two or three of these mm. already. It's already too late. So what we have is we have a week, uh, probably a month of float between the 1231 and the, uh, essentially February 1 because the, the audit firms would start cranking up yes. in, in March. So we got a, basically a four week window what we would have to recover or potential for recovery. Yeah. And so what, what I'm suggesting anyway is that the weekly reports start, the selectmen's meeting, mm -hmm. next selectmen's meeting, we have a report from both offices as to their progress and given that progress or not, that we are in a position to make a, adjustments. With all due respect, um, we're discussing this as if the week of, we're already we're already building in, you know, a, 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 a month delay, you know, a, a month of flow. Because that's all we have. Yeah. Um, why are we holding ourselves collectively to a December 31st hard deadline? I mean, why aren't we doing that? Um, let's talk about float on December 31. Um, why aren't we holding ourselves to that? Why aren't we having another meeting in two weeks here and, and talking about this, this 
this weekly goal. That's well, they haven't started. They so, haven't started. So, so <laughs> give, given that they're going to take they, two they, weeks, mind, they've started. You know, five months ago. Water's over the dam. So now it's, what do we do in the next two weeks to say that we're on a track, given that we understand that track, that on or about December 31st. Yeah. 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 yeah, in two weeks. Okay. Is there a sense of, should, should we have a, 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 mm -hmm. a, a plan of action? Should, we're, should we be missing that deadline two weeks from tonight? The answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. And like you, and then you talk about bringing having Pioneer Valley bring in a, a company to do the treasury. I don't even think Pioneer Valley is doing that. They have they have had the contract with you know Eric. My, my yeah, recommendation would be uh, to contact Pioneer Valley, the board of selectmen, contact Pioneer yeah, Valley with call. the with sort of an open ended question: yeah. Are there yeah. services yeah. like the accounting services? Yes, I, yeah. Are there other people out there that do such a thing with treasure? Yes, if we needed to do that, I will call Pioneer Valley and see if there are other services out there that can help us. Can we do that between now and two weeks from tonight? I can make the call and I'll find out so I'll have an answer for you. Thank you very much. Okay. What is the expectation of the selectman of how much time in a given week the treasurer's office could spend? Lonnie, what do you put in for hourly week? Um, you're, you're here 30 hours a week. Mm -hmm. That's what she's paid for. And that's what you're paid that for. The, that's how the salary is calculated. <coughs> on the 30 hour no, no, it's not calculated like that. On 30 hours. Do you? Uh, how is it based? I mean, what's the oh, it's an hourly wage. She she gets an hourly wage. And it's for how many hours she puts in a week. She's not salaried. But if you take the amount within the salary figure, whatever, 48000 or whatever it is, and divide it out by 52 weeks, how many hours is that a week? Well, we haven't done that. That's because it's an interim position. Yeah. It wasn't required to yeah. be done like yeah, that. Yeah, it's an interim position. That's so right. when I, I calculate the <clears throat> salaries for all salaried positions at the beginning of each fiscal year, I determine which positions based on the budget are salary and which positions based on the budget are hourly positions. Um, anyone that is a salary position is given a weekly rate and that is what they put in for every week. Um, everyone that is an hourly employee is given an hourly rate. Um, however, if you are an interim employee, your rate is calculated solely based on your contract that is signed with you and the selectman's office. So I am not, um, I don't put in amounts for that at all so i do no calculations for those so the, hers are based solely based on what she works at the hourly rate determined by the selectman but but the interim treasury position is some correlation to the budget that was allocated on, on by the town meeting exactly mm -hmm. now so my question is can that be speeded up in other words could could she put in more hours yes. lonnie could you put in more hours Yes, she could put in. Yeah, she just answered you. She could put in more hours. And well, I think I think what's I think what's fundamentally important though is to understand a breakout of of what hours are needed for what functions going through the treasurer's office and then what hours it's going to take in order to. I'd like to specifically understand what kind of time it's going to take in order to have the appropriate level of detail, cash book information together to do. You know what? What is the what is the like hourly burden to getting from where we are currently to the level of detail of cash book, whether it's like to aggregate that information for a month's worth of that information or two months worth of that information, 
like what is the expected amount of time based on the records we have and the level of detail that we need to get it to to be able to compare the records be between the offices like like what what part of your week is it going to take and does that mean whether it's extra hours for you whether it's extra hours for the assistant treasurer taking on some of that work whether it's extra hours bringing in Didi what what is the what is the breakout of the tasks that have to go through the office and I get that there's there's variability someone can walk in your office and want to you know take care of paying off a, something you know yeah. yes. I, I get it but on a on a general basis based off of the hours available to the department and the hours required to get the cash book together and be be ready and to spend the time physically going through and reconciling right because how fast that's going to go is going to depend on the quality of the inputs from both sides right mm -hmm. um if we could get that kind of like somewhat granular for both offices what you have going on right and, and hours available and do we think there's an hour shortfall based on the amount of work that has to happen the various flavors of work that have to happen and and getting to this like end of the year goal right because I, I think if we don't break it out on that granular level that's where we we are we're likely to trip up and, and that'll help us so, understand that so but between now and the 19th yeah we're going to have a, a couple of weeks of Good effort feel for it. yeah we're going to have an effort we understand 1231 we understand not wanting to slip and so we'll have some calculation as to how we are pro progressing or not right and if we're not then ours are an option yeah. or outside resources are an yeah. option right and okay. you'll have that call yes, i'll have a call maureen did you have a question no i'm sorry okay I'm sorry, I just wanted to, just as a, aside from the advisory board, just as a, as a private citizen, I wanted to agree with, with Beth's point as far as a work plan, because that's normally, as you know, in yes. business, you need a work plan to figure out <laughs> how to get from here to there, milestones and everything else. So, so we'll, like we said, we'll know more in two weeks, and I'm going to make the call to Pioneer Valley if we need some more help to get them down. Actually, okay, okay. all right. Um, my question was, um, how many hours? How many hours does she give us each week? You know, to assist one. Do how is it not set by the week, but by the workload? Um, Lately, okay, sure. Um, last week or the week before, the co combination of both weeks is twenty hours. Twenty hours. Yeah. It's good. So is it possible that you each took a month's reconciliation and did it? So Lonnie would work, let's say, on March, and you worked on April. Would that expedite it or no? You need to do it together. Pretty much, I think you need to do it together because we have to um, we have to balance one month before we go to the next month. Right. Yep. You, right. Do, you have, have to do them. That, but that's a two-person job. You have to do the months in order. So in order to start the following month, you have to have the dollar amount, yeah. the ending balance from the previous month mm -hmm. as the starting balance. Yeah. But one person could be entering remaining data into months while well, one person is reconciling. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm uh, a little unclear on, um, this isn't a strictly linear one thing and then another process. In other words, the audit can go on simultaneously with the submittal of the uh, Schedule A's for fiscal year 19. And getting the free cash certified process goes along in parallel to the audit, does it not? Well, I think the risk that you have there is that the audit is going to pull from resources that are required in order to, to complete the cash book and do actually physically do the reconciliation. Well, they're not going to, that data isn't going to be used in submitting the Schedule A. Right? No, but what they do when they come in is we tend to use the same auditing firm for all of our the towns that we work with so we have a typical way of doing okay. our sites and um, the company that we have used as our preferred auditor knows that so he knows what to expect when we do sites so we put together spreadsheets um, when we do the schedule a um, they're excel spreadsheets they're large they're in depth they're actually more in depth than just doing the schedule a and we use them for everything throughout the year we use them 
um, to put the recap information in. We use them for parts of the balance sheet. And then we give them to the auditor, and they use them as part of their checks and balances to make sure that all of our numbers tie back out. We prefer to not have an audit completed until all of the that fiscal year's information has been submitted to DOR. They will do an audit if your balance sheet has been submitted and your Schedule A has not. Um, they would prefer not to. Um, they will not finalize your audit until your Schedule A has been submitted and approved, so you won't get anything back um, because they will wait and see the results of your Schedule A. Um, so it's possible, but it's it's not the best approach. That sounded like you do your schedule A's before the audit is complete. You do your schedule A before you even schedule an audit. Okay. And so if the schedule A goes into DOR, yep. then they're deciding the attention. on your, they basically look at your balance sheet and your you schedule A. You your balance sheet's <laughs> already been approved, but the DOR basically <coughs> looks at your balance sheet because there's spots in your schedule A that have to prove back to your balance sheet. They also have to yeah. prove back to your recap. Yeah. Okay. Come back to the chair, please. Okay. Um, w the auditing company has told us that they will not come back here into Brookfield until everything is reconciled. So they want every department reconciled with each other before they will even come back in here. So my, my basic question is, when does the town get a free cash certification? In this, in this timeline that we're talking about, whether it's December 31st to finish it or January 31st. It can't start until they have a balance sheet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so the balance. And the balance sheet can't be derived until the audit is completed? No. 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 Somewhere around December 31st, hopefully I will submit the balance sheet. And then depending on how long the Department of Revenue takes to get it back, that's when we'll get a free cash number. Okay, so, so from a capital planning perspective, from an advisory committee perspective, somewhere around well, 10 February. March 1st? I, I would hope a, a normal balance sheet takes about a week to come back and generate free cash. Um, I'm assuming we'll get a lot of questions based off of our balance sheet and the lack of a submittal from the prior year. Um, so I would estimate it's probably going to take about a month to generate um, because we do go back and forth. So somewhere, if we make it December 31st, then... Somewhere around, hopefully, February 1st. February 1st. Given the holidays. And if we have some slippage, we're talking in the middle of February. Yeah, right. And we would have all of the, from the advisory committee perspective, um, you'd have all the numbers you would need in order to be able to project uh, your living room. So that's on the recap. Um, that's what the assessor and I are working on now um, to do the levy limit. Um, which I do not, I, I should have the balance sheet for, but there is an option when you submit the tax rate recap. It's called a letter in lieu of balance sheet. So you give them a few numbers uh, and you sign basically a letter um, in the Department of Revenue's gateway system that just basically says, I have not prepared a balance sheet. It is in process. These are my ending trial balance numbers. Um, we will include an actual letter saying that we are not committing to those numbers. Um, so we submit that just so they understand that we are still working on it. And uh, my part of the question, maybe. Another part of the question? Is, uh, is, is there money missing? Is, uh, are you co still confident that there's no missing money? There is no missing money. Um, we posted the $1.4 million variance was the police station ban, your short-term borrowing, was never posted in fiscal year 17. We posted that. There was adjusting entries, totaling the other bits and pieces of the money. They all belonged in fiscal year 17. We are posting everything in fiscal year 18 because we don't want our hands on fiscal year 17. Um, so we're raising up the beginning balance of fiscal year 18. Um, that was with the good graces of Department of Revenue saying yes, so we know fiscal year 17 ending balance will no longer match fiscal year 18 beginning balance. Um, we went over the stabilization with a fine tooth comb. The ending balance as of right now is the $360,813. There is no missing money. There was 
some very unfortunate mispostings. The $128,000 does not need to come out of here. However, it was part of the mispostings. It was posted in fiscal year 17 as a deduction, which it should have been. It was applied during a town meeting and it was allocated to the correct funds. However, in fiscal year 18, it was added to the beginning balance for whatever reason. We have reduced the beginning balance back to what it should have been, which was 540, uh, 511,134 dollars. Um, we took out the 18 money spent. We added back in the money that you returned. We took out the money spent in 19 and 20. You have 360 thousand dollars. 813 and 17 cents in stabilization. There is no money missing. It was just horrible mispostings, um, which everything I do obviously is public information. I have all of my files, if anyone ever would like to see them and see where I have moved money, shifted, made corrections. I have circles. Um, the problem is, um, the prior accountant was taking your town meetings, so it was fiscal year 18, or fiscal year 19 town meeting, I'm sorry, and was posting it in June of fiscal year 18. So they were, all the town meetings were back posted one fiscal year. Um, so that happened for two fiscal years in a row. So each fiscal year was off, making the amounts in each stabilization year wrong. Um, so the $360,000 is the proper number. There is no money missing. There's no money missing, as far as we can tell, anywhere. Um, just a lot of clerical mess. Yeah. 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 And the auditors will, they'll clear all that up as well. Steve? <coughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm just back to our timeline. Um, our next, our next look at this is going to be our first milestone is going to be November 19th, which is Tuesday, two, yes. two weeks from today. I wanted to ask the Treasury Department for their expectations of what will you have finished, how many months, what will be done on February 19th, excuse me, November 19th. Just want to make sure we're clear. Start doing the Jeopardy too. <laughs> Let's be clear. I didn't put a timeline. I could ask. Probably two to three months. So within that two week period, you'll have two to three months. Yeah. Sorry. Within that two week period, you'll have two to three months worth done. Yes. That's your expectation. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Get water. Is that? I don't know wait, wait a minute. Times. We had we have somebody that's been waiting. Tom. Okay. okay. Miss Washburn. Hi. I have a couple of questions through the board to the town account. Are you are you indicating that 2017 has not been balanced? 2017. So fiscal year 17. It. They're calling it balanced. The Department of Revenue did accept a balance sheet from the town accountant and her private consultant that was hired by the town. However, it was not balanced. Um, we've brought that to the attention of the Department of Revenue. Um, on paper, it did balance out. So the balance sheet itself has a series of proofs at the bottom that all have to zero out in order to be able to submit. It will reject the submittal if you have even a penny at the bottom column. They're zeroed out. However, the attached report that came out of VADAR, the software system, the general ledger did not match the overall dollar amount in the balance sheet. At that time, fiscal year 17, Department of Revenue's policy was not to review the attached report unless there was an erroneous issue in the balance sheet, which they did not see. So they did not match the report to the balance sheet. We have brought that to their attention. They have accepted it and said that that is an issue, but it's fine. It's been submitted. Free cash was generated. We were to make corrections throughout fiscal year 18. So it was balanced. 
free cash was generated. And were we fined by the state for like filing and? No. no. So they don't fine you per se. The only thing that they can do, so if you don't submit your balance sheet on time, you could hit the, the date of just you're having your free cash expire, so you just wouldn't get free cash. As far as your Schedule A goes, if you don't submit it by its due date, um, which is the end of the year, um, they give you, they will give you somewhat of a grace period. When it hits around March, that's when they start saying basically, okay, now we're going to hold your monthly state aid. Um, you had your state aid held one month, maybe two months, and it was immediately released again as soon as the Department of Revenue was notified. Um, they are still submitting and releasing state aid to you because we are remaining in constant contact with the Department of Revenue. So they know that you are making progress, um, that the town is interested in correcting all of its issues. If that was not the case, the end penalty basically isn't a fine. They withhold your state aid, and if it goes on for too long, they end up looking into a possible receivership. And, and we have an interim time with the treasurer at this point? Yes. Okay, and when are we going to be hiring a, a full-time treasurer? Prob probably after we're, when we get done with uh, all yeah. the balancing of the books and after the audit's done, because we just couldn't. For 2018? Huh? What do you mean for 2000? I don't. You're still working on 2018. Is that my understanding? I'm working on 18. I'm hoping to have done at the end of the week, and then I'll have to finish 19, even though we're currently in fiscal year 20. Right. And that's my question. When you get done working well, on 2000 and fiscal year 2018 or fiscal year 2019? 19. 19. When we're done with 19 and we have our audit done, okay, so then. Okay. Be another year or six but, months. But we just can't yeah. pet. We just can't take somebody and just drop them in the middle of this right now. Well, we did that how many times? Okay, I mean, this is what? why we're in this mess because we kept having new treasurers every time we turned around. No, we're not. It it, it wasn't all caused by the treasury department. We it was problems with the accounting department that we had. Is it the treasury accountant? The, 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 I mean, the town accountant and the was, treasurer. They was work. Both. It, it was both. This oh. was both. It was both. So, I mean, between the town accountant that we hired and the treasurer that we hired, and then one quit, one passed away, one just left us hanging, and, you Holy know, book. I mean, at what point of a selectman, the three of you, going to, you know, find a permanent solution to the problem that we've had apparently since 2015, 2016? 14. Predates that. Oh, predates that. Actually, that it goes worse. back to about 2011. Yeah. So that makes it even worse. So I mean, at what point? I mean, I, I was on the finance committee when we had issues with, I think, 14. So now we're in, we're coming into, we're in fiscal year 2020. Well, so we're going a, to like six years that have gone by that we have not been able to get our finances together. At what hmm. point are we going to? Well, as I just explained to you, Pat, I said when all of this is finished, the audit's finished, then we'll, we'll be, um... Okay, but what are the board of selectmen doing about the situation that we're in? Besides the fact that we have, it sounds like, a, a finally, an accountant that, that uh, has a handle on really what's going on in town, but when is the town itself our leaders that we elect? When are they going to handle the situation and get our finances in order so that we don't have signs that say we're missing $325,000 of our free cash. And, and, and that's based on standing what? here at a town meeting saying we have over $600,000 in cash and now we only have about $300,000. And people in this room, I won't name names, but there are people in this room who think that we should use our free cash and you know, spend money on things that we want, our wish lists, and then worry about getting our free cash back after we settle our finances. That's like putting Thank the you. wagon before the horse. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so my question is, you know, all of these people are sitting in this room for the same reason, to find out what's going to happen with the financing of the town, 
and when are we going to have a solution, a permanent solution, and a permanent person that has the qualifications to do that job? Like I, and I, and I don't <clears throat> know the town treasurer, oh. the interim treasurer, and I don't mean anything personal by it, but the last three treasurers that we had were, were not up to snuff. Chair. Madam Chair, I believe this is a <coughs> conversation history from the town finances to personnel yeah. issues. And no, it's not personnel issues, Chairman. It is about the town finances. Mr. Washburn, can I speak please? Mm -hmm. I'm addressing the chair. Well, I was in the middle of speaking and can you raise your hand and interrupt me. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's, Pat, we're going to move on. I already tried right. to tell you. <clears throat> Once the you haven't answered my question, I'm still waiting for an answer. I, I the answered it, but you. Finances are set to no. 2019 is not an answer. How are you permanently going to fix the situation? We are permanent. Have a solution yet, Madam Chair. Do you have a solution? Do the three of you have any idea how you're going to move forward? Well, I do. I do. Have Mr. Do I have the floor? Yes, you do. We're going to have she an won't audit. Whether we call them on January 1st or February 1st, we're going to call an audit team to get in here. They're going to take a month. There's going to be a page and a half of audit findings, at least from my experience, of corrections that this town needs to make. And given those audit findings and corrections, we, board and town, need to face into changes as to the administration of this town. I and that's the being on a committee, Clarence where they were going to hire a new treasurer. And at that time, the people that were on that committee recommended that they do an audit. And the board of selectmen came back and said, it would cost too much money <laughs> at the time. <clears throat> when was it? I was, a, I was on that board with you. Am I wrong? <laughs> no, you're not wrong. I'm not wrong. We're gonna okay? So my thing is, is that it's probably already <laughs> cost us a lot of money for not doing that audit in the first place. Well, Pat, what I just so tried to explain to you, once the audit is done and we get back all of our problems that we've had with the different departments, we will sit down, the auditor will sit down with, we'll have a department head meeting, we'll sit down and we will straighten out every department and what the findings of the auditor so that they will r run smoothly and then after that is done, we, we know then we will start, um, we'll get, probably a job search out for a new treasurer. My question, Linda, to the town of County, aren't you finding errors now in departments? Aren't you correcting things that are happening now in our town financing yes. that they should be addressing now with the head of the departments? Yes. And so I'm, why are we waiting until an audit We're not. That? I, no, we're any not. Any issues on finding uh, now? Any issues I'm finding in departments now, I am addressing with the department head and having them correct it going forward. So that way there are no more issues. We've done, I've done training in the collector's office because that was another office that never balanced with the town accountant. So that's been done. Um, I've gone over accounts with the highway department. I've gone over different, I, we balanced overlay for the first time in the assessor's office for the last two fiscal years which had never been done historically. So we are finding issues and correcting them now. We're not gonna wait for an audit report. We're gonna get, it'll all get written up in the management letter of the audit report because it's still issues. Um, but we are correcting them. I'm not gonna wait for an audit report to come out to correct issues, that's just foolish. Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. and as I understand it, you have the latest revision of the financial policies of this town, and you have continued to edit and audit. I am still working on them, amongst other things I am, and my biggest suggestion in the financial policies, amongst many other edits, will be that I use this in other towns, and I think it works very well um, for oversight for everybody. Um, we do a monthly, it's called a monthly review. Um, it is signed by the accountant, the treasurer, and the collector. It is just a quick one-page report. It is what month are we in, what month are you balanced to, this is the cash balance of the town, and are we balanced, the treasurer and the accountant have to sign it. This is the receivable balance mm -hmm. of the town, and are we balanced, and the accountant and the collector have to sign it. A copy goes to the Board of Selectmen, and the copy 
I, I have finance committees in all my other towns, so I'm sorry. The copy would go to the advisory board. It's presented mm -hmm. at their meetings, their monthly meetings, so that way the public is well aware of what is going on, where we're balanced to, how far behind each office is. Um, so I'm open to suggestions if people think that more should be added to it. We do this in all my other towns. It's just something quick. So, some basic the, It's foundation. very basic. No, it Start, a starting point. I don't know that we would want to add anything until we had exactly. kind of test yeah. drove it mm -hmm. and, and gotten a feel for whether it met anybody's needs. Tom? Thank you. Um, coming back to the uh, plan at hand to get this the year 19 paperwork submitted to the state, um, given that the treasurer's office has said that they will get two to three months done um, by the next, uh, by Tuesday the 19th, yes, the 19th. two weeks, um, I would like to, one request I have is that could the uh, treasurer and accounts office submit their status reports on Tuesdays, given that that's the day that the accountant's in the office and that's the day the most progress is going to happen. Uh, and I would also ask if the, um, if the advisory board could be given a copy of those reports um, from the selectman's office. Yes. All right. And let's see. And then the other, my one other observation is on the if the account, if the treasurer's office completes two months by the 19th, that means that at a continued pace, uh, at a, an accelerated pace of reconciling two months every week thereafter. Instead of two weeks for two months, they get one week, they will be done Christmas Eve. And so that's that a- That uh, nice present <laughs> if it happened. I, I, and so I am uh, hopeful that they are being conserved in their estimates and that they will have this done sooner, but I will, I understand very little about what goes on in the treasurer's office, and so I will defer to their significant expertise in the area. And, and that, and I would expect that it might start a little, it might take a little bit to start and get the progress nailed down between the two offices of the level of detail and the information there too. And that I think the expectation would be is there's the capability of accelerating that once we've got the process proved. I suspected that there would be a ramp up period. Yeah. Okay. That's, That's what I'm thinking. I so. think we need to. <laughs> Peter? Um, I think uh, when a month ago when we set this reporting period, there was um, some discussion about whether, based on the report, you would then consider having a special town meeting. Uh, and I'm presuming that this, that is not going to be the case. No, no, I, I think we've avoided. We avoided. We're not going to, as far as I'm personally, we're not going to do a special town meeting, and I hope the other two agree with me. Well, because well, we, we alleviated the, the one thing that would have driven it, it, the, de the desire to have a special town meeting, uh, our, our grant writer, Kathy, managed yeah, Kathy to alleviate the need because there was a concern we would not be able to accept the park grant mm -hmm. if we didn't have a special town meeting by negotiating having the, yeah. the letter of support in lieu of the actual funds allocated yeah. for that grant. It put us in a position where we can take the time to do this right, get get reconciled, <coughs> get to the point where the scheduling and the balance sheet are in, and get our free cash filed before we start determining where we need to allocate those funds. So, we were also able to resolve the question of acquiring a cruiser using the uh, fleet repair replacement. We haven't even. We haven't gotten no, that. No, we haven't got that far yet. Mm -hmm. He's considering that. He's That's considering the, the yeah. chief is considering yeah. leasing. Yeah, because he requested that of you, and that would be up to you to decide. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Well, we haven't seen. We haven't um, had him in at all. He's he's on vacation right now. Yeah, we haven't seen his final we proposal seen his regarding final. what yeah, what is. He did give be. us some figures, but we haven't seen the final ones yet. So that's your that's your leaning. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mr. Holcraft. Mr. Um, could I have some clarification? I understand you <coughs> talked about the stabilization. How long, we, now the last town annual meeting, we were quoting 600 something thousand, 650, 690. Now we're down to 360. I still, you, no, no one has explained to me where that money went or where the accounting went. And when did we really have that 600 something thousand in our bank? You didn't. How long has it not been in that bank? So you According have. to figures. 
So at the end of fiscal hmm. year 17, you had 511 $134,000. Um, that was the last reported balance, and I did check back through fiscal year 17, 16, and 15 to make sure there was no errors in accounting there. Um, in fiscal year 18, you had an annual town meeting, which you took $132,636 from stabilization. You had a fiscal year 18 special town meeting which you took $53,308,065 from stabilization. Fiscal year 19, you had an annual town meeting which you put back 261,181. Then you had a fiscal year 19 special town meeting where you took from stabilization 105,700. You had another fiscal year 19 special town meeting where you took 36,358. And then you had the fiscal year 20 town meeting where you took 83,500. The problem was at the end of fiscal year seven, at the beginning of fiscal year 18, the $128,500 that was voted in fiscal year 17 was added to the beginning balance of fiscal year 18, bringing the starting balance up to 697,000, which is where the dollar amount came from that advisory appears to have used as their starting amount, because that is what's in the general ledger. We have since corrected that because the 128,000 belonged in fiscal year 17 and it was a debit mm -hmm. as a debit it was should never have even been in fiscal year 18 and definitely not as a credit um, so and then again in fiscal year 18 your town meeting entry of two hundred sixty nine thousand dollars was also put into fiscal year 18 so there was just yeah, a lot of errors in away. we're going to do the same the thing. ledger so there was never Six hundred ninety-seven thousand. Yeah, it was just one entry too many. <coughs> one way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. This this is the last question we're going to take from Mr. O'Connell, and we're going to move on. Yeah. Hmm? Hmm? But all those subtractions from stabilization were with the proviso of the intent that when free cash was certified, it would be restored to stabilization. Yes. So in yes. effect, we're still, we still have free cash sitting Out there. to be certified. Yes. And then it would be right. You have not received if the down so both. Yep. yep. You have not received free cash since you have taken from stabilization the last three times because it was the 19 and 20 <laughs> meetings. You have not received free cash since then. Did you have um, so it would be approximately 211-ish yep. thousand. QQLA. Hmm? QQLA. Yeah. Yeah. It's 360. So you'd be back up to somewhere so close yeah. to where around so 60. Thank, right. hmm? Thank the treasurer. Exactly. Office. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay. This is that for? No, no. We, we ended the, Pat. We ended this discussion. But well, Linda, quick clarification whether or not that two hundred and eighty thousand dollars is from fiscal year two thousand eighteen or fiscal year two thousand eighteen and nineteen. The money that needs to be returned? No, the two hundred and you mentioned that that free cash <laughs> would be around two hundred and eighty thousand, is that what you said? No. 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 That we haven't gotten yet. How much is the figure? Free cash that we haven't received yet? I I don't know. She doesn't know that. I wouldn't even have a good guesstimate until I do the balance sheet. And even then, it would be a, a, a real guess. It's probably safe to say it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of what you got in fiscal year 17. Which was? I don't know. $326,000. Yeah. Yeah. $326,000, somewhere thereabouts. Wow. Yep. But we. Time for QQA. Okay, okay. We're going to move on. I want to thank you. Very much for this You're welcome. Thank you. And I want to thank the Treasurer's Department Thanks. for this and the Town Accountant for coming in. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Okay, we're going to move on now to uh, QQLA letter of support. The Board of Selectmen is writing, uh, we had a letter written to it by um, our, we did, and uh, it's, we're going to be advised that the Board of Selectmen fully support the QQLA's application on a DEP 319 grant. So we're going to uh, take that up. Uh, it's for $25,000, and so we support that, and we're sending out the letter. So a motion to a sign motion the to QPLA sign. support letter? I'll second that. So um, for discussion? Any discussion? So yeah. one of the other areas that we were in. Don, do you have any questions, or you're, you're all set with this? Okay. So and the funding's going to be the funding so will be on the annual town meeting, so, Madam so Chair. You yes. did have a question oh. from... Right. As, as a member of the, of the Board of Directors of the QQLA, basically we're, we're in agreement. I mean, we were pushing for the special town meeting, but now um, because of the situation, yeah. uh, the letter, I think, would be yeah. enough for us to, yes. to push mm -hmm. ahead. To, and, and even if the, the June meeting something were to happen. And yeah, that's so that. And I'd, I'd seen um, Mr. Nielsen, and I had discussed this with Mr. Nielsen also. Right, and he made a presentation to the advisory board yeah. also. Oh, well, this was after the presentation I happened to see him. I'm sorry? It was after the presentation that he had made to the advisory right. board. Right, I mean, he's made the round, so yeah. everyone's aware of yeah. it. Yes, he's aware of it. Hmm. So we need to vote. Uh, all in favor of Aye. signing the letter? Aye. Any discussion from anybody else? No, it's just okay. this was one of the other areas where we were anticipating mm -hmm. an, a special town meeting to be able to help yeah. do this but with this mm -hmm. we're able to avoid that so it avoids the special okay. now we now we have uh, an appointment okay we are reappointing Jeffrey Taylor to be the billing inspector with his term to expire June 30th, 2020. I'd motion. like the motion. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 is going Back to work Jeff. Um, tomorrow and he'll have office hours during this two week, um, you know, where he's not really technically appointed. He said he will work for free and he'll make sure that someone's in the office so we don't lose anything. Any permits or anything. Okay. And now, for inspections, he'll have his alternate to do the inspection. And then he is, they've also talked about doing some, um, instead of doing the night hours, they've talked about doing day hours. They want to do some day hours. Day yeah. hours, so they feel maybe it will help the contractors. Mm -hmm. And we need to t continue to talk about it. Yeah. Because there, there are residents that will not be available yeah. during those hours so oh, therefore know. if there can be split hours yeah like they could do it say one one say the beginning of the month have considering that yes right and then so, the night night hours on the second night but nothing is decided no, nothing's decided okay now we have a wage authorization it came from the highway department it's for stephen butnick for emergency operator uh, when they need this motion, snow. To, motion to sign. sign second all in favor aye, aye. meeting I would like to talk about um, getting a policy for wage authorizations how they will be signed yep and it needs to go in that financial policy yeah. document hmm. okay now we have the uh, it's to sign the ABCC 2020 season population increase and uh, this is from the figure from the town clerk is uh, 3400 residents so we're lucky. We're lucky. Uh, does that keep us under the threshold? Yeah. That's right. We get to 3,600, yeah. we're in trouble. Because there are no volunteers in this town of late. No additional volunteers. It's the same. Yeah. So yeah. I like authorization yeah. for Motion to sign. Oh, motion Second. to sign. <laughs> That's for liquor licenses. Yes. 
but it's a telltale. We're getting ready. We're sent up the application, so we're just waiting to back and then. Other, other? Other? No. I'm going to go on to see if we have a correspondence. I have something. Yes. I, I have something. Yes. Um, if, it's, if it's a different subject. It is definitely a different subject. Um, as you know, the, um, the uh, Cassie Oil is, is uh, applying for the permit for the uh, tanks. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and in our in our neighborhood, um, and you know everyone that came to the last meeting was very concerned about what would happen if there's a leak, what would happen if you know this, that, or the other thing. And um, I've been thinking about about what needs to be what what should be done. People in that area, and they say it's a mile radius. Technically, if something happened, it would be in, within a mile radius. We have. We wouldn't have an evacuation plan. Um, you know, nothing has been set up for that. Um, nothing has been set up in case, you know, we have an emergency. I know that, you know, P even Peter had said in the last meeting that we had that uh, the, the fire department, they, you know, they just don't have the capacity if there was an issue. Um, you know, they don't have the right equipment if, if something like this happened. So um, I guess the reason that I, I'm here is that I, I'm asking that the board of selectmen, um, we have a civil defense department, right? Yes. We have, we have, a, we have a Brookfield here. Emergency yeah. Management. Yes. Right. Brookfield right. Emergency right. Management. So, and, and actually, we probably, regardless of whether Tassie Oil was going in or not, where we have uh, national grid gas lines in this town mm -hmm. there should be some form mm -hmm. of an emergency action plan for whether it was from the new business or the pre-existing infrastructure I agree. so I agree. but something i mean i think it's something that needs to be addressed you know by by the town itself so that people they are informed you know i mean where's the closest shelter that you can go it, it certainly can't be here because we're within less than a mile of where these where the, the uh, gas station is where the tanks are going to be so where would an appropriate place be for people to go to a shelter what would be set up and and, and what kind of supplies or or equipment would we have if we do have this kind sure of it's good meeting tomorrow well tomorrow there's a planning board meeting Tomorrow, tomorrow evening, and this will all be discussed at the planning board meeting. But it's not up to the planning yeah. board to go to the civil defense people. By the well, way, I, well, I, I saw that Karen, yes, Karen, to, Karen today yeah. had sent a note yeah. out to um, Peter. out to Peter, yeah. and and I think okay. I think oh, I think I we really just need Karen. to do a, a review of the existing plans yeah. and and circle back around on whether this necessitates a change in those plans. Do we even have plans? Peter's not here. Peter's well, we not here. To Peter, so he hasn't answered the email yet. So, uh -huh. we'll Mr. Cle Mr. Cleveland, Mr. Cleveland, yeah, because I, I think that, that do you have know, something I to add to her conversation? A big concern. I contacted FEMA to Boston twice. There's never been an accident with propane in Massachusetts. No. Okay. Have you more worried about that 18,000 gallons of gasoline that come in the last five months? So it's, I, I, it's, I, you're, you're talking about the preaching to the choir. I, I live just as close to that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, actually, yeah. I, I mean, my concern would be when you take a look at what happened, what was it in, was it they Lawrence or where have you with the, with the underlying hmm. underground so, line? So, 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 10 cars, right. a guy ran into the tank. I was not far behind it. For adults, fronts of three deckers, that's gasoline. That's 18,000 gallons when they come in. Well, so, I think the engineer indicated that it was a, a, it was a mile radius that the impact would be in the so give, given the situation okay. we have a planning board meeting yeah, yeah, tomorrow night there will be requirements coming from that it would suggest that anything that is a recommendation of the planning board back to the board of selectmen and to Peter because unfortunately Peter's not here now he, he I'm sure will take uh, an action on his part to do what we need to do yeah, I, I, I think that would make a lot of people, and yes. that area over there is a big concern if you talk to anybody over there. Okay. I think it, it, it might ease their 
their minds a little bit more if there was something. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll be here tomorrow night, Sharon. Did you? <clears throat> can you invite Peter to come to the meeting Peter tomorrow? Peter has notified me that he cannot attend. Oh, he can't. But he has given me his assurance mm -hmm. that he would work if a permit is granted and an order of conditions is placed in the permit, mm -hmm. then an evacuation plan must be formulated that he would work with the property owner to formulate such a plan with the help of the select board. Okay. Great. Great. It's already been discussed. Okay. It will be brought up tomorrow okay. in detail. <clears throat> That's good. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Moving on here. Correspondence. Uh, this is from the WRTA Advisory Board. They need a... Um, they have a position open for a disabled commuter position, and uh, they would like to have one from the town of Brookfield. So we'll have to work on that and see who we can get. Publicize. We'll publicize this, Karen. We'll get it out. Okay, if that's all we have. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn at probably, what is it, uh, 8, 803. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.